The US presidential election is still four months away, but Wall Street thinks he already knows who will win. Since the debate last week, investors have been rushing to put on trades that would benefit from a second Trump presidency. But is the market jumping the gun? Have the odds of a second Trump term really gone up? Which Democrat has the best chance to give Trump a run for his money? What is the best election trade right now? Much has been said about Biden's debate performance last week. I don't know about you, but I was less surprised by Biden's performance than I was by the reaction of the mainstream media. Only a week before the debate, the New York Times was accusing the Trump campaign of circulating doctored and misleading videos to paint Biden in a bad light. And after the debate, the New York Times wasted no time in jumping on the new Biden must go bandwagon. Like in George Orwell's 1984, American mainstream media today is nothing more than the propaganda arm of the party, the Democratic Party. No wonder only 32% of Americans say that they trust the mainstream media when it comes to reporting the news fully and objectively. Mainstream media may be blind, but it does not mean that it is not powerful. Once the mainstream media has decided that Biden stands little chance against Trump in November, Biden's days as the Democratic nominee are numbered. If even the New York Times say so, it must be true. With every passing day this week, more and more Democrats, especially in the House of Representatives, are joining the chorus calling on Biden to step aside. With Trump now leading Biden by a formidable six percentage points in new polls by the New York Times, Wall Street Journal, and CNN, the risk is that the desertion from Biden will soon turn into a stampede after Congress returns from their July 4th recess. The odds are growing that Trump will not be running against Biden in November. In my mind, the only question is whether whoever will take Biden's place stands a better chance in beating Trump. I talked about the so-called incumbency advantage in a previous video. Incumbency advantage is an important aspect of American politics. Incumbents have the advantage of being generally better known and better funded than their challengers. But I would argue that the 2024 presidential election could prove to be the exception rather than the rule. According to a Pew Research Center survey published in April, about half of Americans say that they would replace both Biden and Trump on the ballot including amazingly 62% of Biden supporters. Moreover, given Joe Biden's low approval rating, another candidate will have the advantage of not having to defend his track record or at least have more wiggle room. I also think name recognition is less important than in the past. With widespread distrust in politicians, especially politicians associated with the establishment, new and fresh faces could score well with voters especially younger voters. Polls show that younger voters are more bothered by Biden's age than older voters and have been flocking to Trump in recent months. For this reason, I disagree with the consensus at the moment that Trump's odds of winning a second term have gone up since the debate. I actually think there's a case to be made that with the increased probability that Biden will be replaced by a potentially stronger candidate, Trump's chances have gone down somewhat. At a minimum, I think the election uncertainty has gone up. There are two sources of uncertainty. One, who will replace Biden at the top of the ticket? Two, whether that person will be able to make the race against Trump a competitive one. In theory, Democrats will choose someone who has the best chance in beating Trump. But this is not a given. Under current party rules, if Biden were to drop out before the Democratic Party convention, the 4,000 delegates would vote for a new nominee. Because the Democrats are running against the clock, my guess is that there will be a virtual nomination before the convention once Biden has agreed to stand aside. 
However, I cannot rule out that political insiders and party heavyweights would decide to change the party rules in the name of expediency that favors a politically connected candidate. Whatever happens, I think it's safe to assume that the process to select a replacement for Biden will be anything but smooth. In most states, because most voters will be voting according to party lines, it won't matter too much who ends up winning the party nomination. But in three crucial swing states where neither party has a lock on, the top of the ticket will matter possibly a great deal. The swing states that I have in mind are Pennsylvania, Michigan, and Wisconsin. In 2020, Biden won in all these three states, but just barely. He won in Wisconsin by 0.6 percentage point, in Pennsylvania by 0.7 percentage point, in Michigan by 2.6 percentage points. Given Trump's current large lead in Georgia and Arizona, if he manages to win in just one of these three states, he will almost certainly win the election. So who among the Democratic hopefuls has the best chance in winning in Michigan, Pennsylvania, and Wisconsin? And will that person become the new party nominee? About 15% of registered voters in Pennsylvania and Wisconsin and 19% of registered voters in Michigan are independent. Independent voters may be a minority in these states, but we can be sure that they will be the swing factor in November. Which Democratic candidate will resonate the most with independent voters in these states? Kamala Harris seems to be the flavor of the moment. However, a political morning consult poll conducted just before the debate shows that only 25% of independents think that Kamala Harris will win a presidential election. Her favorability is slightly better than Biden's, but worse than Trump's. A Bloomberg Morning Consult poll for Pennsylvania shows Trump beating Biden by four points, but beating Kamala Harris by seven points. Some Democrats are worried that if they do not go with Harris, they will lose the black votes. That may or may not be correct, but if Harris ends up being at the top of the Democratic Party ticket, I would bet that Trump will win easily in November. There are not enough polling data about the other candidates for us to draw strong conclusions. However, I think Gavin Newsom's track record in California would hurt him among independent voters in Michigan, Pennsylvania, and Wisconsin. Independents tend to be more moderate. I suspect that they're less likely to be impressed by California's progressive policies adopted by Newsom. I think Trump will love to run against Gavin Newsom. Of all the potential Democratic Party candidates, I actually think that Gretchen Whitmer, the two-time governor of Michigan, has the best chance beating Trump in Michigan, Pennsylvania, and Wisconsin. She appeals to both moderates and progressives. In 2021, she signed two bipartisan tax cuts for small businesses into law. Her proposal for reproductive rights was approved by a wide margin in a 2022 election. In 2023, Standards & Poor's reaffirmed its AA rating for Michigan, citing good budget practices and strong economic performance. If Whitmer is chosen to run against Trump, my bet is that it will be a close contest. The only question is, will she be the party nominee? Below are the likely election and market scenarios over the next two months and the probabilities that would assign to them. I think if Biden were to stay in the race, Trump will beat him by a big margin and the Republicans will take control of both houses of Congress. Let's call this scenario one. I would give it a 20% chance. In this scenario, we would likely see a steepening of the US yield curve as a Republican clean sweep will almost certainly lead to a further relaxation of fiscal discipline in Washington. I think it's much more likely that Biden will be persuaded to quit the race, relinquishing his delegate vote so that a new nominee will be chosen either before or at the convention. I would give it an 80% chance of this happening. In a competition to replace Biden, I think Gretchen Whitmer has the best chance to emerge as the winner. If I'm right, I think the uncertainty around the outcome of the presidential election would increase significantly, and that market volatility will go up accordingly. Let's call this scenario two. I would give it a 40% chance. I think if Kamala Harris were to be chosen to replace Biden, 
the outcome will be similar to Biden staying in the race. In other words, a Republican clean sweep and a steeper yield curve. To this scenario, I give a 20% chance. I would give a 20% chance to all other scenarios involving other candidates like Newsom, Josh Shapiro, Andy Beshear, and so on. I don't think any of them can beat Trump, but they're likely to do better than Biden against Trump. I think of this scenario as a market neutral on a two-month horizon. For investors, over the next six to eight weeks, there's a 40% chance of curse deepening, a 40% chance of increased volatility, and a 20% chance of the status quo. I like owning involved here. The market is finally starting to focus on the elections, while the economy is showing clear signs of a slowdown. Risk premium is too low, and vol is too cheap. I remain long the September VIX contract.